parents, however, in my view and in my own experience in Barbados, are quite ready and willing to compliment and to speak about the child's physiological development. How fast he's growing, how tall he is, how strong he looks, and so on. As well as about the child's academic development. How well he or she is reading, what they're getting in maths and English and so forth. But one very critical and very important area of the child's development that we always tend to ignore has to do with the child's sexual maturity. And I think that that sets the stage for the level of ambivalence and the denial that we see in Barbados and it causes significant problems for the child as the child passes through this stage of development. So, parents have to be, or should try to be more broad-minded. See, parents should try to learn as much as possible about human growth and development. That sounds like a big thing, but it really isn't. You need to know about your child's health, the physical health, the emotional health, and I have a pastor on the platform, so I should say spiritual health as well. Children and parents need to ensure, by the way they're parents, that children develop a good sense of what is right and what is wrong, what is appropriate and what is inappropriate, and that a child learn to be obedient and to be respectful not only to the parents in the household, but to adults in the community, and by extension, the adults within the school system. Parents as well, and for those who uh, have this allegiance to the flogging of children, like to believe that if a child is hard ears, the answer is a flogging or a beating or some kind of punishment. I boldly say that I am diametrically opposed to the hitting of children, especially within the school system. I feel very strongly that no teacher in the system should want the responsibility of flogging people's children. Those of us who have come out of a history of slavery in particular should be very sensitive to this. And therefore, I say all this to make the point that as a child reaches puberty and gets ready for adolescence, what we have done with our children and our failure sometimes to find a better way of communicating with our children, of getting our children to do those things that we believe they should do and are in their best interest, we always take the shortcut. We feel a slap around your head or a cup on your back or lash with water we can put our hands on. We'll solve the problem and it does not. Now let me get the few again. I'm sure that some of you will take care on this and I'm ready for it. Now, puberty really is the beginning of this transition. And it is signaled by, and I will cut out all of the um, technological terms to make the point that for the first time, um, certain hormones that were not present become activated and it results in both boys and girls a level of growth that they did not have before. We talk about the secondary, the secondary sexual characteristics and some, we know some of them. The boy gets taller and he begins to see some muscles, he begins to get the hair on the chin and the axilla and the pubic area and so on. And we know very well that the perspiration sometimes will change. In girls, the first thing we will see that um, breasts might begin to develop, hips might begin to shake, and the girl begin to look a little womanish. The point, however, is that a lot of parents do not prepare children for this stage of development. 
They would speak with parents about how important it is to, to help children to understand that this is going to happen. And there's nothing you can do about it. It is normal and natural. And therefore, parents have to get with it and help children to understand, yes, it simply means that you are transitioning from childhood to adulthood. And along with these physiological changes are emotional changes as well. And one of the significant changes is to do with the sexual maturity which I spoke about. And we do not like to believe or to think that our children will become sexually stimulated or they will develop a sexual desire or sexual urges. It comes and it is natural. We have, however, to help them to understand that that does not mean that you have to have sex. But your body is simply preparing itself for adulthood. And we tend to make light of what our children are going through. And the parents will take time to help children to understand their bodies and that they're sexual beings and there's such a thing as human sexuality. And as we pass through life, we're going to pass through a number of developmental stages. The children who are exposed to this information, good quality, wholesome information, are the children who tend to be more secure and can understand that sexual intercourse and sexual activity really is an adult event and that you must be therefore on your guard that there are children in your peer group, there are people you'll meet on the street who will begin to say things to you that they never said before and the compliments and the offers are not necessarily because they care for you but because they want to exploit you. So parents, both men and women, must prepare children for this stage of development. Now I want to run very quickly from that because I know you'll take me up on that. And I want to use the remaining time that I have to make the point that the transition and the psychology spoke about the transition from this little school with one teacher and a small number of students and maybe a small school compound to this large school with hundreds of children and many different teachers and suddenly you're not going to school in your own home district but you're going into an area far from home and your parents are not necessarily hovering over you as they were before and that is where the core values come in and if we as parents were doing a good job and we were keeping pace with our children's development we wouldn't have to worry as much as we tend to do at a time when parents should really be letting go a little they tend to suppress children to the extent that children feel somewhat rebellious and suddenly, um, in fact, suddenly parents are very suspicious of everything the children do and they do that because they're insecure and they do not trust the children enough and that is a reflection of the level of parenting that we would have exposed them to. Um, I am going to stop here, but to make the point that we all have a responsibility to ensure that our children get the best parenting possible. And that not only do we tell them what we think is the best thing to do, but that we set examples that our children will follow. Only Friday night, I was in a particular place outside of a house. And this child could be no more than seven or eight years old. And I heard this mother shouting, come in here and get an eye and spoke in your hand. <laughs> in the most aggressive tone possible. And you know what eye it is. And this was a mother that you would, you would think that would, I mean to me that is abusive of the child. And our children experience a lot of that. So I want to make the point that our children are sensitive and because they might look, you know, in the adolescent state as if they're big, they're still children. Their brains tell in the process of development. And emotionally, they're still fragile. And sometimes we treat them 
at one time as if they're men and women, and at other time you want to treat them as children. The inconsistency is bad for the children's growth and development. So let me stop there. Uh, I have difficulty cutting short what I wanted to say. I want to talk about sexual orientation and all of those other things that we do not like to talk about because in the middle of puberty and the beginning of adolescence, children will experience what I very often call sexual confusion because they're looking for this identity. The psychologist spoke about identity and talking about sexual identity because the boy or girl must know and understand what he is all about and what image he has of himself or herself. So there's some uh, children who will gravitate to children of the opposite sex, and they're the heterosexual that we talk about, and there's not necessarily a sexual relationship at that stage, but